Hello everyone, welcome again. So today we will be looking at the industrial chemistry option once again. And in particular we've been talking about Kp or the equilibrium constant a lot. So we'll be looking at practical ways of using or practical exercises that we're likely to see in the HSC for Kp. Okay. So calculating Kp is what we're after. Um, there will be most, more than likely a question on this in the HSC. So we have to be aware of certain things when we calculate this Kp. So first things first, write the chemical equation before you attempt any sort of Kp um, calculation. Write down the equation. And that's good practice for any chemistry question. You should write down the chemical equation first. Now, from that chemical equation, we know that the stoichiometric coefficients will become the powers in the Kp equation. So when we look at the Kp equation, you'll understand what I mean by that. Um, and pork. Remember, I talked about this in the very first lesson on Kp. Pork is products over reactants for K. So, so to get K, we do products over reactants. Okay. And Kp has no value in terms of units. It's dimensionless. So we don't need any units. Similar to how moles, we don't really write moles, or you can if you really want to, but moles is technically not really a unit either. It's just a number of things. So it doesn't need any units. That's the main thing. So let's do an example calculation. Okay? So I'll work through this one with you, and hopefully you'll see how it works. So we have formic acid, and we have it uh, dissociating. So this is our formic acid. Dissociates to give us H3O. and the formate ion. Okay. Now, under equilibrium conditions at 298 degrees Kelvin, the concentration of hydronium ions and HCOO minus ions um, are this number and this number: 3.64 times 10 to the minus 4, and 5.46 times 10 to the minus 4. Now, the concentration of formic acid at the start was 1.09 times 10 to the minus 3. Actually, at, by equilibrium time, it was this. Okay. So when we reach equilibrium, this, this, and this are all the concentrations that we have. Okay. Now, we have this equation. We've written it out. Well, I've written it out, but you guys should have as well. Now, the concentration of H3O is this. Concentration of the formate ion is this. And the formic acid concentration is this. This is all data from the question. right? So let's calculate the equilibrium constant. So remembering Kp is products over reactants, right? Now, can you see there's only ones in front of each of these chemicals? Just one. So the power is one. And anything to the power one is just, there's no change to it. So from your maths, you should know this. One, one, one. So that's fine, okay? Then we sub in the numbers, which we took from the question. Sub in the numbers. And once you do all the calculations, so once you multiply these together and divide by this, you get 1.82 times 10 to the minus 4. Okay? Now that's a fairly simple calculation, and you can see that it's not so hard. What else we're going to talk about is a first hand investigation for, for equilibrium reactions. Okay? So if you didn't understand that last example, don't worry, there's more in the question segment. But let's just refocus now on our first hand investigation. So remembering that chemistry has a lot of these pracs or first hand investigations. And so we need to study them um, in order to do well in the HSC, so to speak. So there's many that you could pick um, that are equilibrium reactions, many, many, many ones. But in this lesson, we'll talk about the equilibrium between nitrogen dioxide and dinitrogen tetraoxide. Okay, so those are the two chemicals there. So this is your reaction. It's endothermic, as you can see, in, and there's this is your nitrogen dinitrogen tetraoxide, and this is your nitrogen dioxide. So the key thing to note about this equilibrium system is that N2O2 is clear, whereas NO2 is murky brown. And that murky brown is part of that photochemical smog that we talked about in chemical monitoring and management. Okay, so just just consider that for a second, and then um, we'll move on. Okay, 
So let's look at the effective pressure. So when placed under pressure, the equilibrium will shift towards the left to take up less volume. Okay. So what we'll notice is a noticeable lightening as the gas mixture will occur in the gas mixture since N2O2 is colorless. Okay. So if this is a blocked syringe, we start here, it's brown, and as he puts more pressure on it, it eventually turns clear because it's because remembering that the equilibrium reaction is So as we put more pressure on it, there's more moles of gas on this side, so they'll all go this way. And so it'll become clearer because this chemical is clear, whereas this chemical is murky brown. That makes sense? So now we can look at the temperature, the effect of temperature. So when the temperature is increased, the equilibrium shifts to the right to absorb the excess energy. So remembering that it's an endothermic reaction, so going from N2O2 to 2NO2 is endothermic, so it absorbs energy. So as you can see, when we dunk, so we'll just wait till it starts again. So when we dunk this in the hot water, it gets darker because we're going towards that NO2. And when we cool it, it goes the other way. It goes back to clear because it's trying to get rid of that energy or try to replace that energy and thus becomes dinitrogen tetroxide. So a darkening of the mixture gas will result as there is more NO2, which is murky brown, when we increase the temperature. If we go the other way, it gets clearer. Okay. So that concludes today's lesson on the practical aspects of, of working on KP. So we learned how to calculate it, what are the ways, uh, what are the main things to note when we calculate it. And we looked at a first-hand investigation of of an equilibrium system. So we'll move on to the question segment. So question five, write the equation for the equilibrium constant, Kp, for the reaction as shown here. Okay. So remembering all the things we talked about, pork products over reactants equals Kp. So all we have to do is just write the equation. We don't need to know the number. So we'll build it up slowly one by one. So product, so that's the first one that we write down. And you can see it's squared because of that 2 here. Then it's over the reactant, so here's one reactant. There's a 1 here, so the power is just 1. And then here you've got the other reactant squared because of the 2 here. And so this is your equation for K or Kp um, for this particular reaction. Okay? It's fairly simple, so we'll move to something a bit harder now. So the following equation is important in the formation of acid rain, and that's the same equation that we saw just then. Now at 700 degrees Celsius, the equilibrium concentrations of SO2, uh, O2 and SO3 are found to be 1, 0.2 and 2 moles respectively. Okay, so now we just have to calculate Kp. So here's the equation from the last question. So that's what we need to use. And so we just put in all the numbers. And you get 2, 1 squared, and 0.2. And if you do the calculation, you should get out 10. So 1 times 0.2 is 0.2. And 2 divided by 0.2 is 10. Okay? And that's your answer. So moving on to question 7. In the first hand investigation that we talked about, the mixture of gases began to turn clear when placed under pressure. Explain why. And the equation is given below here. Okay? So explain, remember, is to do with cause and effect. And so we'll try and explain it um, using this equation. So the increased pressure causes the equilibrium to shift to the left, um, causing an increased concentration of N2O2. Now, the reason why is because there's less moles of gas on the left hand side, and when we put it under pressure, we're looking for the lowest number of moles. Now the N2O2 is colorless, meaning a lightning towards clear for the mixture of gases. So if the concentration of this increases, there must be less of this, so the murkiness must disappear, and so you'll see it getting clearer. And that's the reason. Okay. So it's just an application of Le Chatelier's principle in the sense that 
when we increase the pressure, the equilibrium shifts. Okay? So moving on. Given that same equation, explain why refrigerating it will cause it to lighten. Okay? So why will refrigeration cause this thing to lighten, or the mixture of gases to lighten? So first thing to note is the reaction is exothermic. Okay? And by placing the gas in a cold environment, you reduce the temperature of the system. Okay? This shifts the equilibrium to the left. So the reaction that's actually exothermic is not this reaction. It's, it's the reaction in this direction. Okay? And that's what it means. So the reaction of N2O2, uh, N NO2 to N2O2 is exothermic. And by placing the gases in a cold environment, you reduce the temperature of that system. Now this shifts the equilibrium to the left, because that reaction in that direction is, is exothermic. Now that means that we get more of this produced. And so since more N2O2 is produced, which is colorless, the mixture, of course, will lighten. Okay? Because that is clear, whereas the NO2 is murky brown. Okay? So barring this first part, the rest should make sense. So just remembering that the reaction that's actually exothermic is the left-hand direction. And so that's how we use this whole idea of equilibrium to study certain chemical systems. Okay? So that wraps up today's lesson on practical applications of KP and calculating it from given values. So hopefully you've learned over the course of this series what KP is, how you can use it, and also how to calculate it correctly. Okay? So I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson, and good luck with your studies in industrial chemistry.